Hello and welcome to Uroru Niwa. My name is Mike Charlton. Last time we looked at Power Pomodoros and uh, we get, got started in writing a game in Elm. Uh, Elm is a computer language. This time I want to talk about the tooling that you need to be efficient when you're programming. And uh, I also want to talk a little bit up front about the direction of this series as I, as I see it going forward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start a Pomodoro and that way I won't talk too much which will really be a blessing I think um, we'll see how it goes I actually have a bit of a hard deadline today because I have to catch a bus to catch a train uh, to go to my mother-in-law's house <laughs> so I can't spend extra time on this today so I have to really hurry all right so the first thing I'm going to do is I'll start my time minus I'm just going to use the break one, so one minute, so I'm only allowed to talk for one minute. All right, last time I talked about Power Pomodoros, that was really the motivation for making the video to begin with. I didn't really think very much about what I wanted to do or what I wanted to accomplish with this video series before I started recording, actually. And it wasn't until after I finished recording and I started to think about it, what about what I wanted to accomplish that I really uh, got some ideas. So I've already wasted half my time. So I think that I really would like to show people the types of techniques that I use as a programmer and that I prefer to use. Um, and so if you're a professional programmer, I'd like to kind of show you those kinds of things that I do that uh, might be interesting to you. But even more so, I think for people who are not programmers who might be coming over from my Dwarf Fortress videos and want to know what's it like to write a game, what's it like to write computer programs, I want to give you an introduction into that. Now you can see my time's up and I really didn't do a very good job of <laughs> introducing myself in that one minute, but that's the way it goes and I'll try and go on, I'll try and fill in the details as we go on because I don't want to waste any time and I'm going to uh, get started on our next Pomodoro. So here we go, I'll do time minus D. And last time, I, I want to, I'm just going to open up another window. So I'm in the third window now. And I'm going to do, I have to go into the right directory. I always put all my, my development, my own development in a directory called devel. And go into Elm Beans. And now I'm going to Emacs minus NW. Emacs is my, my programming editor. Um, it's a text editor. You can use any ex editor you want, really. I mean, if you're on Windows, I've heard that Notepad++ is quite nice to use. So I'm using Emacs, and again, minus NW just means no window. And I want to look at my to-do. So I don't actually remember what we were doing. There we go, we had our uh, four Pomodoros. And you can see we have some to-dos left. So I'm just going to organize this very quickly before we start. And so I'll just make, he, um, I'm going to make a heading here. So this was in episode one. And then I'm just going to indent all of these. It's not letting me do that. Oh, that's unfortunate. I wonder if it's because I need to, yeah. It's, it appears that I have to have them. So right here, I'm just using alt right arrow. This is in org mode in Emacs. And I, one day I'll explain what org mode in is. And I think, what I was going to say in the introduction, which I didn't get time to, say that I'm not going to explain everything I'm doing. And it um, may seem a bit strange because you might be thinking, well, if you're not going to explain what you're doing, then how, you know, how do we know, you know, what to do ourselves if we want to do it? And that's a very good question. To answer that question, maybe I'll go back to my background as a as a as a teacher but i actually spent five years just let me type this i actually spent five years teaching english as a foreign language and i learned something about teaching uh maybe only a little bit <laughs> but i learned something about teaching in that time and the what i learned was that um explicit instruction often is not the best way to teach people. If you explain things, um, and then people have a feeling that they need to memorize things and they have to kind of drill it, and what you do is you get people who have a lot of proficiency in a 
in a task, but they don't necessarily have any, I have to expand that, they don't necessarily have any, have any fluency in the task. And what we really want is fluency. That's what we want. We want you to be able to just, you know, pick up and go like I'm doing now. I don't know what I'm doing. I have, like I said before, I don't really understand, this should be Pomodoro 1, I don't really understand everything about what I'm doing, but I understand enough that I can just model along go, going forward. So this I'm just doing some some setup. So there we go. Now we've got uh, episode two, and um, in our first Pomodoro, well, we won't be in our first Pomodoro. In the first Pomodoro, I just organized myself, so I'll just put that in here. And I'll just make it done. Because we only have a, a little bit of time left. And in the second Pomodoro, we're going to... We're going to... Ah, we're going to build an image rather than using the reactor. And before we do that, in fact, I might use my one minute reflection time to... Um, show you something else and I may since we've got 20 seconds I might just get started on that one of the things I wanted to do with that idea of proficiency versus fluency and I'm going to read hello.elm and one of the things that we were looking at before is we went through this code last time and it's not a lot of code and I have let me just start my Pomodoro again my so time minus BD. So I'm going back to window one. You'll see in the bottom, it turns blue, depending on what um, window I'm in. That's one, two, what's that? Three, sorry. Um, two, one. So we have some code here, and I explained a little bit about what it does. But the thing that you really need to understand is that this text prints, te prints hello on the screen. So if I do this reactor again, I think it was Elm Reactor. Uh, oh, yes, I need to export my path again. Oh, that's a pain. Did we actually? No, I didn't. Well, that's going to waste all my time. I should probably put that in. And this is good, good for the theme of our um, talk. So I'm going to actually put this in my to-do list. Before we do this... All right, so I'll explain that in a minute. The hour time's up for reflection. So I guess we might as well just get started with that. Now we have five minutes to do what I wanted to do. So the problem here is that in, in a Unix system, not all of your commands are available to you. You have to explicitly say where the files are where, that have all your commands. And so if I do, if I do this echo dollar path, so path is kind of a, it's called an environment variable. And you can see these are all of the places where I have where I have executable code. So these are all the places where I have command. And I have lots of uh, different places. But the key here is that I have a directory called, uh, it's just called node module, not dot node modules. And in there, there's a directory called dot bin. And this is where all my Elm commands are. And so I need to tell, I need to tell my system that I want to run these commands. And I, I, to do that, I just need to alter this path. Now, it's kind of inconvenient to do that at the beginning, to type that in all the time. So what I'm going to do, so I'm just going to make a little script, which is maybe kind of a silly thing to do, but it'll save us some time as we go forward. And um, I'll just call it setup. Oh, I hate this. This is the problem I had last time with the not being able to create a file because when the one of the plugins I have in Emacs is that when you type in a file that you want to open and it doesn't find that file in your directory, it searches all of your directories for uh, files with a similar name. And so if you want to make a new file that has the same name as another file in somewhere in your computer, it just decides, oh, you wanted to open that one. So when I was trying to open readme.md, it was it just opened completely random ones on my computer, which was really useless. So, and I, got, I have to fix that, but I haven't gone around to it yet. 
All right, you don't really have to understand what that's doing for now. This is just a magical incantation for the moment. I'm not going to really explain it because if you want to know how to set your path, you can read up about how to how to do that on the uh, on the internet, and I think it's a good thing to do. So I won't explain it too much. But this is just get to get us started. So export path equals dollar path colon devel um, beams node modules dot bin. And really, I'm just I'm just adding that directory to the end of my path variable. Always important to put it on the end, though, not on the beginning. If you put it on the beginning, it means that it'll search this directory first. And if someone puts something nasty in there, then that'll mean uh, you'll run that command rather than what's in your normal system. I'll just write that. And I need to make that executable. Let's just have a look here. So if I say chmod a plus x setup. Now, people who are very familiar with Unix will probably see a few things that I've done that they'll think is completely wrong, and and they are right that it is completely wrong, but I don't really care, because this will hopefully work as long as I haven't made a mistake. So let's try. Let's see if that worked. I always forget how this works. Yeah. Let's try again. Yeah, so it didn't work. Because I think we need to we need to source it. So if I do that, then it'll work. There we go. And what that means is, like, if I if I um, just run the shell shell command, then it basically set up the path in a different shell, and then ended the shell. But if you source it, then it puts it in your own one, and that's what I wanted. We've finished our Pomodoro, and we did something. So that's good. And that just saves us some time next time we want to start. Oops. All right, and I'll go into my reflection mode. We have one more minute to think about what we're doing. And I, what I want to do, sorry, I'm going to the wrong windows. What I want to do is I'm just going to add here, so I want to explain what this code is doing a little bit. And I don't really have anything else to talk about, to be honest. I, I think I'm going to, because uh, I haven't really done very much. Our reflection time is up, so we just got to rest for about a minute. And let's go on. Now what I wanted to do, like I said, was I wanted to show you, let's get rid of this file, is you saw how we've got this text hello, and what that does is it prints hello. So if we just go Elm Reactor again, hopefully it'll work now. Yay. And now if I go to the correct window and do localhost localhost on 8000, it brings up our thing again. And I think if I remember correctly, we just click on hello.elm, it builds it. And you see it's much faster this time, because it already had built all of the ancillary files. And so it just prints hello. And what's important to understand about this is not so much, you don't need to know everything about this, right? There's lots of stuff here. We've got a module called hello. We're importing this module called HTML and it gives us a, this function text. Then we make a function called main. But the really important thing here is that if I change this to now, let's say welcome, welcome to Elm Beans. Then when we recompile it again, and hopefully if I just click this again, it'll recompile it. And now it says welcome to Elm Beans. So we can change that to whatever we want and it'll work. The other thing to understand about this, this is main function. The main function is always running, right? And again, I have this L doc error, which I have no idea what it's about. So. One of these days, I'll look that up. But this this function gets run automatically, and I can make other functions. And we're going to explain, we're going to talk about functions at another time. I don't think we'll get to it today, but we'll see. But let's just say we make a function called Mike, and we can say Mike equals text. Mike is great. It's interesting that 
Oh, okay, just when it was... The syntax highlighting was a bit strange. Um, and now if I go back to here and run hello.elm, you'll see that it does not print it. And so you might be thinking, well, you did this text, Mike, this is great. Why didn't it show up on the screen? And the reason is because this function is never run, right? And so I could actually run this function. Hopefully this will work. <laughs> given that I don't know what I'm doing. But we can just say Mike here, and then I'll go back here, and I'm hoping that it will put it on the screen. Oops, we got a, we got an error. Maybe we forgot some parentheses or a comma. Um, yes. Um, yes, indeed, that is exactly what we did. Yeah, this is not going to work at all. Um, yeah, that's kind of unfortunate, in fact. Let's just uh, do something a little bit yeah, that's never going to work. Now, I don't know how to concatenate text in Elm. I'm going to guess it's plus. This will work a little bit better. Maybe. We'll see. I have no idea. Let's just rerun that. Nope, it doesn't like that. So it doesn't like plus. Yeah, so let's guess. In PureScript, the concatenation operator is this. Let's see if it's the same in Elm. Nope, doesn't like that as well. Now, interestingly, I have potential solution for this, so I'm just going to go here, and we've got one minute left, and I'm going to go into Devel, and I have a cheat sheet, which I got off, off of the internet, so hopefully it says in there. Let's see, is it in here? Looks like it, yeah. So it looks like in, And again, it's not, it's not important that you understand exactly what's going on. Let's just look for a string. Uh, not very useful. All right, I'm wasting too much time. And I've run out of time, actually, so let me just... Google search. Ah, here we go. It's empty, repeat, cons. That adds character. Ah, append. Ah, you can use a plus plus operator to do this. That did not come naturally to me. So this should now hopefully work. We'll give it a try. Yeah, there we go. Uh, you notice we're missing a space because we just concatenated those two strings. But you'll see what happened here is we ran this function Mike and we uh, took the output, which is this string, and we put it, we concatenated it with this string. So I think I'll just leave that in there. I quite like that. So there we go. We rebuild. And there we go. Welcome to Elm Beans. Mike is great. Definitely, definitely in favor of that. So let's, now I'm gonna stop the reactor. I've done that. Now you have, obviously you won't have, exp you won't have understood all of that. And you may be, you may have looked at that and say, well, I was making lots of mistakes and why didn't the other thing work and that kind of stuff. And you should keep those questions in your head, right? You should be thinking, okay, that didn't work. Why didn't that work? And then as we go forward, you can build a better model. And it's really important when you're going for fluency as opposed to proficiency that you build that model in your head about what's going to work and what's not going to work. And you'll see that what I tried was I said, okay, you know, another language, another similar language has an operator that looks like this, so maybe it'll work like that, right? And so I'm trying things and they're failing, and then I go and, and discover what the correct way of doing things is. And that's how you build that model by testing your boundaries. And it's very important to test those boundaries for what you're doing. So that's enough reflection for now. And let's go back to Pomodoro 4. Oops. 
and I'm wondering whether we'll actually get to the point where we will build an image, but let's see. First thing I think I want to do with this, I'm just going to add some things. I think we need to output JavaScript, and then we need to put the JavaScript in an HTML file. That sounds good to me. Yeah, it's now quarter to ten, so my hard my hard deadline is coming up. I should probably I should probably take off around ten. So I'm and I'm hoping not to make these episodes too long, just so that they're enjoyable and also so I can get them out the door quicker. So let's start again. So we've got our five minutes. Now I do not know how to build JavaScript in Elm. Now you might be even wondering what I'm talking about. What is, what is this building JavaScript thing? And the answer is that when you're in your browser, there's actually code being run. If we go to Google, this is, by the way, this is me, I think when I was eight or nine. So that's what I look like. I, I, I look like that now, actually. Yeah, I don't understand what that's doing, actually. Let me just, if I go here and just say inspect this, this will give me where I want to go. And what you can see is this is this is HTML here, and this is how this is how the web is built. This is how all of these things are put on a page, and and I, I just got there by right clicking and then going to um, inspect. And I wonder if I go to view page source, uh, then you can see all of the code on the on the page. Which is a, this is kind of just the source code, rather than just having a tree. Now you'll see this actually has this is actually some JavaScript, and it's in this kind of tag here called script. And you'll see here that there's a function and stuff like that. Now it's very hard to understand because it's been sort of compressed, um, and so you can't really read it very well. But this is pretty much how it works. And so you have you'll have an HTML file. And then you'll have that tag script, which contains this JavaScript. And that JavaScript will print, uh, will do some kind of thing. Now, in our case, it's just printing stuff. And maybe if I just do the same thing, if I go here, let's go, if I actually uh, view page source, ah, that's much better. Yeah. And so what you can see here is that we have our HTML, and it runs this run Elm program script. So it's very easy to understand. So this is one script. It says compile this program. Here's another script that says while the document body, while the while you have a child in the document body, it removes the child and then runs the Elm program. So basically what it's saying is take whatever's in the in the output, remove it, and replace it with whatever our Elm program is running. And so we're going to do the we're going to do essentially exactly the same thing, but we need to generate this script and then we'll put it into some HTML here and I may actually just steal this like why not so that it looks exactly the same having said that I need to get started and I only have 50 seconds left so I don't know how to do it let's see how do I generate uh, the JavaScript so if I say um, generate JavaScript and you know what there's another way I can do this if this doesn't uh, yeah yeah, there's going to be an easier way to do this, and that is if I look in node modules. Bin, you'll see we have all of these things here, and I think, I'm guessing that this Elm make actually will do what we want. So I'm going to just give that a try. I have no idea. I don't know whether like Elm make and Elm package. I don't really know what they do, but let's just let's just try running Elm make, and. I remember from someone telling me that this function Elm will actually run these other Elm things. So you can say Elm dash make, or you can say Elm space make, and it doesn't make any difference. So let's try that. And success, and it didn't compile anything. Well, that's no good. So let me just have a quick look. And now we have something to look for. Does it give me an example? Ah, so you should have uh, root directory like project that all of your Elm related stuff is going to live in and then you say Elm make main.elm output main.html. Oh, that's interesting. It generates HTML. So we don't even have to make our own HTML. That's very nice. And that gives you, and it's just telling you that you should probably put things in a source directory like this, which makes some sense. You have your license. Okay, so we have project and then we have source. 
and then we have our license and readme and everything so this is pretty much how we want to do it so and then you have ah you have this elm package.json which is the configuration for it that sounds good but let's give it let's give it a quick try just our elm make with so if i say elm make and then i forget what our thing is called so hello.elm Ooh, it created a file to have a but it says compiled zero modules which makes me think it didn't work oh it did do something so I just I just splatted that out to the screen so let's have a look and see what it actually did I'm gonna close some of these uh, things that we don't need anymore I'll keep that on as well all right now if you say control O to open a file and you can see I have lots of files that I've opened on my own and if I go into my directory here and I go to this directory see I've got lots and lots of stuff as you can imagine I've got Elm Beans let's have a look at this index.html ah there we go welcome to Elm Beans Mike is great if I just increase that font a bit that doesn't work because my key bindings don't work yeah, pretty much the same. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's a different font, though. Interesting. I wondered about that. The first time I was, was running this, you can see that it has, this is the one that it generates. It uses that font, and here's ours used as this font. And I don't know why that is, but we can figure it out another time. So we have generated our file. Now, the nice thing about that is that actually just generates an HTML file, which is exactly what we want. We can now put this HTML file on a server somewhere, and anyone can run it, and they'll know that Mike is great. And that's that's really everything I want in a computer program. So there we go. So we don't actually have to do what I thought we had to do. I'm happy with this at the moment. So we don't need to do that. I think our Pomodoro is up because it is zero. I didn't notice it end. But let's do one more Pomodoro and then we'll be done because I have to I have to go. Let me just go into reflection mode. All right. So here we've got this display 15 points on the screen, which I'm not going to do right now. We'll do that next time. And I think for our last Pomodoro, what I want to do is I want to set up I want to set up the uh, our directory nicely, just like we saw in that example. Because what we want to do here is we want to make it just easy for us to work in. If someone gives you a piece of work to do and they say, make the computer program do X, it's really tempting to go in and say, okay, I'm going to spend all of my time making the computer program do X. And that's going to be the fastest way of going. But in reality, doing a little bit of work up front to make sure that everything is efficient will go a long way towards making uh, you work quickly throughout the whole progress of your of your project rather than trying to to uh, do everything as fast as possible at the beginning and this is a, this is a very important concept for me and this is why I want to kind of emphasize this in this episode that what we're doing is we're just trying to make things a little more comfortable for us so that when we actually start to write code it's going to be easy to do so there we go and let's get started on our last Pomodoro so all I want to do is I want to have a look at so we don't need this one anymore what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this and so they have this thing where you can put things in a source directory so let's do that and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to rename that hello.elm. I'm going to make it main.elm. I'm going to make a source directory. There we go. And then we're just going to move main.elm into the source directory. Now, you, if you're not familiar with how to use command line in Unix, you might not immediately understand what I'm doing, but as long as you listen to what I'm doing and you look at the screen, eventually you'll pick it up. It's not very difficult, really. Uh, and I think people have this kind of weird idea that it's difficult 
to work from a command line and it really isn't it's just a matter it's a quite a bit faster most of the time actually so we've done that and what i want to do like i said is it says that there's a file called elm package.json and so what we can do how do we get this elm package.json can we make it make it for us or do we have to do it by hand it looks like we have to make it ourselves which is fine let's do that all right i'm just opening up a file and it's going to oh it it is actually there already there oh that's nice oh good so i think when we did when we did elm make it must have uh, generated this file for us which is great and so the source directory is here all we want to do is to change that dot dot means current directory and i'm just going to change this to source put that quote back again and i think that's all that needs to be done and I, I, I found that because they told me to do it here, basically. Set, set the source directories to source. And so now, when we do the same thing, if I say, I wonder now if I just say Elm make, whether it will know how to build it. I'm hoping that's the case. Hmm. Let's get rid of index.html. Try again. I, I find it weird that it says compiled zero modules because we do actually have our own module called hello I believe and yeah it doesn't it doesn't rebuild it so that's kind of that's kind of annoying I wonder if there's any way I can tell it what I want to build doesn't seem like it which is kind of annoying actually but that's fair enough Oh, and you can tell it what your output is going to be as well. So if I just say elm make, I think it was main.elm, main. That's really annoying. You would think that it, having told it where the source directories are, which I did, that it would look in the right directory. Now, we do have main.elm in there. That's really annoying. So if I, if I do this, then it works. Well, that's a bit of a pain. And I don't really want to spend a lot of time trying to figure out why this doesn't work the way you one would expect. I wonder if we say Elm minus minus help. Usually, usually minus minus help tells you, give you some help. And I'm wondering whether there's some options that we're missing. And apparently not. And it's interesting too, because it says that the files are optional. The, these little brackets here mean that these things are optional. And so you should just be able to say Elm make and it should just work. But it doesn't appear to. I wonder if it's just broken. That would be unfortunate, but uh, those things happen on new projects. Anyway, I've run out of time. So next time we will try to finish this up. and I. We didn't actually get anything done, so we, actually I'm just going to put in here that we, what we did manage to do is to, to create a elm make.json file, but it didn't work. And off camera, I'll probably try and figure out why that doesn't work at some point. And then next time when we go, we'll set up our directories nicely again, and we'll continue on. Next time, we will go on to actually writing some code and to do some work on here. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'll see you next time. This has been Uruuru Niwa. My name is Mike Charlton. See you next time.